This lesson is about playing the ball wide. We'll show you just how much you can benefit from a few simple training exercises and a switch in thinking. In this exercise, I'm playing the ball down the middle of the table. Robert can stand in a comfortable position near the middle of the table and does not have to move to reach the ball. Here I'm hitting the ball near the corners of the table. Robert is having to make some small movements with his feet to get to the ball, but you can see that he is still balanced and well inside his hitting zone. I'm now aiming to hit the ball outside the line of the table. I'm coming around the ball using side spin to curl the ball outwards and away from my opponent. Robert's need to move to the ball has significantly increased. That's a double win for me. He has to move to the ball and move back from the ball to maintain good table position. Moving the opponent out of his comfort zone is so important. It weakens the quality and power of the shots he can play, makes his recovery slower and will tire him out. Generating the outwards curl on the ball is the real secret behind playing the ball wide. The wrist is a great tool for many shots. It's also the key to this one. Let's look at four variations. Forehand hook. Forehand fade. Backhand hook. Backhand fade. The forehand hook is the shot where you'll be able to get the most curl out of all the wide shots. Make contact on the side of the ball. This can be adjusted to a little bit higher or lower depending on the height of the ball coming towards you, but always make sure to hit it on the side. It is generally a good idea to drop your wrist and use your wrist to come around the side and the back of the ball. Don't try to hit the ball too hard. It's just like turning a corner in a car. The slower you go, the more the wheels will turn. You'll get maximum curl on your shot if you hit the ball a bit slower. Keep your wrist and arm as relaxed as possible. You'll be able to generate the most amount of curl that way. The length of the table is also important here. The shorter the ball, the more the ball will curl away from your opponent before they get a chance to swing at it. To play the forehand fade, lift your wrist higher rather than dropping it like you did with the forehand hook. You're aiming to hit the ball on the side here as well. This shot is effective for a right-hander against a right-hander, or of course a left-hander versus a left-hander, as you're hitting wide to the opponent's backhand where he has restricted reach. The wrist plays a role here too, but not as great as with the hook. Again, keep in mind you aren't hitting the ball too hard. Remember you want the ball to bounce at a medium to short length on the opponent's side to maximise the curl away. The backhand hook is all about the wrist. It's a similar movement to throwing a frisbee. As long as you're relaxed, your hand and racket will naturally rotate around your wrist. Being able to play the ball wide to the backhand when you enter a backhand to backhand rally is a great strength and you'll be able to draw a weaker shot from the opponent. This would be the one shot in my game that I win the most points with. The backhand fade is a difficult shot where timing is everything. You're relying on a thin contact on the ball 
and are often having to hit across the path of the ball, which means an even thinner, more precise contact is needed. Any slight mistiming will almost certainly lead to error. It's most effective against players who like to pivot, as you can catch them out wide to their forehands. It's an important shot, as there really aren't many players around who do it well. That also means that opponents usually don't expect this shot, which gives you an advantage. Remember, playing shots that your opponent finds difficult to face is at least half the battle won. Get your partner to block to the same area of your side. You practice top spinning one wide to the backhand, then one wide to the forehand. You can do this with either your forehand or your backhand. It'll really teach you how to quickly change your racket angle and make the other small adjustments needed to change where your shot is aimed. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more instructional videos by William Hensel and Brett Clark, you can go to ttedge.com.